go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tuesday night live chat, which is different than Monday night live chat because tonight we're 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 talking with more intelligence. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Mondays are like you know the the, the long weekend, the drag, of the, and now it's Tuesday. <laughs> it is Tuesday indeed. I don't know, crazy world. What are we gonna do? Make sure I'm sitting close enough to the microphone. Yep. Make sure you're talking to the microphone. There we go. There we go. Camera's turning. Party. Let the party begin. Good evening. Good evening. We are just Hi, getting getting fired up here. We are on. We are live, and it's we're gonna start tonight's show by talking about how to use social media when it comes to your DJ business. Then in our second half hour, we're going to, I went through and I was going to pick out the top, my, my top 10 picks from them. I kind of went over that. I think I was like 15, 16 yeah, or so. 10 and I got the list. I'm like, that's a lot more than 10. <laughs> that's more than 10. This guy can't count. And in our final half hour tonight, we're going to be talking with Jason Spencer, who's going to be doing, he's, he's really been digging into this thing called, called Profit First. And he's going to be kind of talking to us about that and giving us some tips on how to change our businesses around a little bit to become more successful, financially successful and growth successful. Is that a good way to say it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And Jason will straighten us out later. So. Welcome. Can I it, just say yeah. a quick little note? I saw Jason present this live at Wedding NBA in uh, Las Vegas, and it was fantastic. You need to hang around and watch that. Nice, nice. That's what I, I've heard that from a few folks. I have not had the 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 privilege of getting to hear Jason speak. So tonight I'll actually be beyond reading the book. This will be my first time of getting to hear him and talk about it. So I'm I'm really excited. So. So Anything welcome. That helps you make money, right? Oh, exactly, exactly. Pay attention to that. And that's that's a big thing, you know. That uh, as we get older, I'd rather work work smarter than harder. And that's right. And that's what this is about. So, social media, DJs, how this all fits together. Let's let's dive into that a little bit. Um, first off, um, I, I, whenever I've done the my my presentation on social media, one thing I like to do is kind of just go through and talk about just the main social media platforms, and to give kind of. A, an update of where they are and who's giving you know, an idea a profile of each one and who's using it and what have you so guys let's let's kind of go through that and give our perceptions of what these different social media platforms are if you got me so as an example we were just talking about LinkedIn before we went on the air LinkedIn is supposed to be the business Facebook the business communication platform what are your B2B, thoughts? Business to business. Yes, business to business. What What are your thoughts on it? Where do you think it is, and how? How? Who's using it, and is it successful? Who's going? You can go first. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, I set up a LinkedIn account way back when, and uh, and thought that it was going to be the thing when I started getting a lot of requests from uh, fellow vendors and other people that I work with, and I went through the trouble, set it all up, and then apparently somewhere along the way I violated some little policy. I don't know if it was because I put a link to my website or exactly what, because the, the slap on the hand message was very vague and um, they deleted my account. They didn't just say, Ooh. hey, fix this. It was They actually deleted it. So it's like, wow, really? Okay, after I spent all that time. So I flushed LinkedIn and didn't ever go back. Uh, in the meantime, in the past six months, I've had more requests to join people on LinkedIn than ever before. Uh, so apparently it's making a resurgence and I should go back and, and reevaluate my position with it. Okay. We'll get back to that, that uh, the reevaluating MJ, your thoughts on LinkedIn. I'm, I just want to say, Mike, you got kicked off of LinkedIn. You are a bad mother. <laughs> I don't know what I did. <laughs> The message was very vague. I think it was a link, but I'm not sure. Wow, he probably talked smack on him, and they're like, "Get out of here, <laughs> man! Get out of um, here!" I do also get a lot of people. Uh, I don't. I guess I don't use LinkedIn ever. I mean, I made it. It's all part of the thing. I think about being DJs that we. It, it, you aren't running your own business. You need to market anywhere and everywhere, even if it's for a little bit. So that was one of those things. I put a thing on there just so it's there, and I'm always getting people. You know, uh, what do they call that when when they tell you when they uh, support like. On LinkedIn, like uh, he's a good speaker or good for the um, whatever recommendation. They write you a recommendation or whatever. They recommendation, do. yeah. And yeah. I get those all the time, but I haven't updated anything since I put the account out there. But the main thing that when I think it deals with more is people like in corporate America. 
getting jobs within, you know, financial worlds and stuff like that, you know, link, you know, making connections with, with other people in the financial world. If you're, if you're in finance or whatever, um, as a DJ and a bit like a business, I don't know. I really don't, I don't know good or bad on that. I, I'm not sure if I have a, an opinion. So I was reading reading an article about LinkedIn the other day, and it was actually refer, talking to talking about LinkedIn, and it was also talking uh, talking about Google Plus. Those are the two that it was really digging on, and I say digging on because obviously this is going to go in a negative negative way here. Um, it was referring to Google Plus as the modern day MySpace, being chased by uh, LinkedIn, which outside of as as MJ was referring to, outside of the the corporate office structure. That, that LinkedIn just isn't isn't for most people. It just doesn't do anything for it. Um, you, you mentioned, uh, Mike, that a lot of people, are, you know, you're getting a lot of requests to be in the network and such. That have, mm-hmm. that actually is, is a deceptive uh, little thing that LinkedIn can do is that when you, you, you go and accept someone, uh, you know, a connection with someone, and then you go and it's like, oh, find more friends. And you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I can maybe find some more contacts. And you do, and then it asks to get your email list. So then that means that everyone that was on, so if you're on someone else's email list, and now all of a sudden you're, they're sending out a mass to everyone. So, yeah, it's really not somebody personally saying, oh, I really want to connect with you. It's you just happen to be on their email list. So, uh, I get the endorsements, but like I said, I, I kind of look away from them. But, hey, you have to admit, amongst Google employees, Google Plus is popular. Oh, yeah. It's it's rocking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I caught that. <laughs> it is rocking. It is rocking. So, Hi, Jason. How you doing? Doing well. I didn't realize you were there to uh, switch screens. Well, you know, you complimented me on my presentation. I got to jump in at some point. But <laughs> you guys were rambling yeah, about was, LinkedIn, so I, 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 was, I wanted to touch on the tail end of that if I still got a chance. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, please. So the one thing that I find LinkedIn is very useful for is researching our prospects in advance. Good point. Our potential customers, they're out there. I mean, we're, we're looking at it as DJs. You know, what are we going to do as a DJ, as an uh, uh, entertainment professional on LinkedIn? Probably not a lot, not necessarily. We're not marketing that well on it. But I use a, a plug in my Gmail called Reportive, and it pulls information directly from LinkedIn because LinkedIn owns them now. They're both out of San Francisco. And I can dig up just about any dirt I want on any of anybody using that email that's linked to their LinkedIn account. So if I have a bride that emails me, I mean, I'm on a a DJ event planner. If that email comes in, I just hover over the email in Gmail, pulls up their information right there in the sidebar. And I know everything I need to know about where they work, where they're located. So I know if this is a local bride or an out of town bride, I can schedule the meetings and so forth based on that preliminary information. And some people think it's creepy to be searching out things like that. Pretty much, but we weren't uh, going to go there, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm just going to go there with this. Yeah. You don't think your, your clients are, are you know, searching for you across the entire vast internet? You're wrong. And right. so for us to do a little bit of homework on them first, before we pick up that phone and return their call, I don't think there's a problem with that. Good point. Show, I, me, I, the people, show me the people that aren't doing that kind of stalking. Exactly. Yeah. In one way or another, yeah. Oh, very much so. You know, you hear, as as we hear, Lori, uh, my wife, she runs a local newspaper, and whenever there's a a police report that comes across or a an arrest thing that comes across, I mean, the first thing I do is I'm headed off to the internet and go search on, you know, or go to Facebook and searching for them, you know, so you can find out more dirt. Anyway, okay. that's my two cents. On no, that, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because I I haven't used it that way, but yeah, that that would be a great resource for finding information. Okay, let's continue on. Um, well, we mentioned Google Plus. Let's just continue on over there. Google Plus was, uh, according to Google, when they first were bringing it out, it was going to be the killer of Facebook, and that's really been working well for them. And and uh, as as MJ alluded to, if you're doing business with Google employees, that is the hot place. No, I meant being a Google employee. <laughs> that's because they're, they're the only people that use it. <laughs> Because they're forced to. Do. No, I, I. This is my opinion on Google Plus. I really think it's a great platform on a lot of levels. I really think they did a lot of things right with the chats and in the in the, in the uh, meetings and all that stuff. But people, you know, they're going to go with what they want to go with. So I don't. I don't necessarily think that they're they failed because they weren't a good brand. And for my, I can tell you, go ahead. I can tell you where it helps is uh, with Google search engine results. If you have Google Plus set up, it does give you a boost in the in the results SEO. 
Yeah, for sure. I've, I've noticed that one. That one. That also. is true. I, I think part of the problem that Google had with that is, is exactly what you started with, John. And that was, they wanted it to be the Facebook killer. They didn't set out to be different. They set out to be better. And, and that's where some people get a little confused. Different is different, but different and better. They, they're two different things really. And not everybody fully understands that. And they should have found the better tool that was different, not just saying here's Facebook and we put this extra layer on top of it. I mean, they don't need a cake topper. They need something that really is different. And I think they're getting there. They have, they entered too late though. Sure. They came in after Twitter. They came in after LinkedIn. They came in after Facebook and they tried to throw all three of them in the same basket and, and they failed at that initially. And I think they realized that as they started to chop off little bits and pieces of it, they separated photos, they separated hangouts. It's still intertwined in the Google sphere because it's all on the Google account, but they've started to pull back on that a little bit. And I think in the next year or so, you're going to see Google plus itself change in the way that they want it to be marketed. I don't know what that is, despite the number of friends that I have at Google here in Northern California. I don't know where they're going with it. Right. Uh, I just know that internally, and, and we talked about this already, internally, they use it pretty heavy. They have their own private version of it internally. And that's what they tend to roll out to the public facing side of it. So they'll test it on their own employees, see how they're using it. They'll start to roll those features out. And I just, I think it's going to be something that will change and will still have an impact, probably not to what they hyped it up to be. What is it? Four or five years ago now, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's still around. It, it hasn't died yet. Now we know Google has a propensity to just drop things like flies. Yep. You know, oh, we're done with this product today. We're going to move on to the next thing. Uh, but I think it'll stay around. They're just, they're, they're finding that little niche for it. Mm -hmm. And they haven't quite identified it yet, but I think they're getting there. And I think it's going to be more, there's certainly enough players in that field still, but I think it's going to be more on the tech side. I think they're going to focus on the tech industry and really be more of a, a slacker type environment as opposed to a Facebook networking environment, if that makes sense. No, I get that. I definitely get that. So to boil it down for DJs. Oh, MJ, we lost your mic. I'm not sure DJ is I had, really it, sorry. I had it on you <laughs> was typing. I was spreading the link for tonight's show so that other people can come in. Yeah. Um, they are breaking down, breaking apart some of the Google Plus attributes into other things. So that's kind of going to be interesting. You know, like the Google Photo thing is now its own thing separate from Google Plus. So it's kind of interesting what's going to happen with that. And I think what it boils it boils down to for us, uh, for DJs out there watching, is I, I and I think we're going to combine a few things you guys have been saying and such about it is, I think as as Mike said, it's something that you've got to have because it does help. But I think as as Jason, what you're referring to, I think it's it, the real bump, bump and benefit. It might be a couple of years out yet. Probably, okay. I I think they haven't quite identified what they need to do with it. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, the the Facebook killer of tomorrow, you know, may not even be in somebody's mind yet. It's just, you know, it's it's hard to know. Yeah, it's hard to know. But the bottom line is, you should have an account. You should have it set up. If for no other reason, just for SEO. Well, it's also important to remember Facebook was a killer, but it still took them five years to get to that point. MySpace was around when Facebook came out, but it took them several years before they were the, I mean, it was started on college campuses. It wasn't for you and me. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's changed so much since it first released even to the public. So it was. it's possible that, that Google will, will get there with it. Anyone over the age of 13 can join as of September 2006 for Facebook. So that was, you know, 10 years ago. And it, as trends go, they've they've beat, you know, the curve. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I okay. just think of the, each, each social media thing as a billboard. Get on it. No matter how much you use it, it's at least somewhat of you have a billboard out there that if someone just happens to come across you there, it's another place to be seen. Yeah, it's, I think that's it's a good it. analogy. I like it. And it's what's, what's kind of nice about it is that that it can be controlled with other apps, so you can we can have things that kind of populate the information, whether it's um, using a buffer or a Hootsuite or some of those different apps or applications, will allow you to manage it without having to put a ton of manual time into it. So, yeah, the the app controllers do help, and especially with the conglomerates. What uh, Instagram is now owned by Facebook. Uh, and so if you post on Instagram, it makes it really easy to post on Facebook, uh, just the same information, share it, et cetera. Uh, 
but I used to use a program called Hootsuite a long time ago that was really popular for allowing you to manage uh, many of the social media platforms and schedule posts ahead of times and, uh, and, and made your life a lot simpler. We would actually sit down on a Sunday and program the whole week's worth of postings yeah. uh, and let everything automate. Yeah. Yep, that was. I forget what their cost is now. You can still use that for, I think it's up to three accounts. And then anything higher than three accounts, you have to start paying their monthly. I think you're right. I yeah. think you're right. It's been a while. I haven't, I haven't looked at them for a long time. And there's other ones too. But if you have a business account with Facebook, you can do the same thing there. Like with uh, the Rewind Report, I can schedule there. I can't do it on my personal page, but I can do it there. So. Cool, cool. Okay, let's let's continue on. One of the the hot ones, and I just had this conversation down in Nam with a couple of DJs, is the the I would say it's the evolving, maybe the growing, maybe the maturing of Snapchat. Snapchat okay. when when it first came out, basically had gotten the whole 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 thing of of a basically being a a social media platform for giving anatomy pictures. Is really what it became, and I'm saying that. In I love a, how you clean that up, John. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Since the since those those anatomy pics, um, it it I think that you're, there's more people who are using it now, and more people that are are engaging their audiences with this. Now, a couple of things with uh, with Snapchat is you know guys, and I have I've not played with this, so if I'm if I'm wrong on this, please correct me. I believe when you put content up, you can put like a 10 second video or a picture and it's up for approximately 24 hours. And during that time, anyone who follows you can see this. This you can only see it once. You can see this. So I think on the first day, if they follow you, they can see it as many times as they want. But anyway, they can see it, but it's only on your, your page for 24 hours. How this is working for DJs, what is, what's really uh, working for some people is that they're using Snapchat for behind the scenes uh, kind of private information, let's call it that. Uh, that uh, as, as an example, if I were using Snapchat, I could be like shooting a snap you know, right now from, and you'd see the behind the scenes of, of what we're doing. Or if we're getting ready to go on the air five minutes before, we would Snapchat and say, hey, this is, you know, they're getting, getting everyone ready. It seems as I've talked to some people who are using it very successfully, and, and this is including people who are, are YouTube creators. We had a good conversation with some last week, two weeks ago, is that they're using Snapchat for that purpose, basically to drive and try to move people to engaging them in a different social media. But it's the attention getter, we'll call it. They're ringing the doorbell there to say, hey, we're going to do something cool. And then that cool thing is happening somewhere else, whether it's happening via Twitter with Periscope, if it's a uh, live uh, Facebook video stream, or if it's something that they're doing with YouTube and live streaming there. I can tell you that my research for Snapchat is the audience is from 12 to about 26, uh, college age and younger. Uh, and, uh, and so depending on who your demographic is, uh, that could very well work for you. It and I've never, thought of, never heard of or thought of using it the way you just described, which is yeah. definitely interesting. I know people who DJs to use it in their business in everything from Snapchatting is they pick a song to play it and then comment about the song. Like this version is the version you need to get, blah, blah, blah. Or so-and-so does this talk and smack or some girl comes up. I, let me, I, I was at a club one time DJing and I'm just kind of bobbing ahead. And the girl's like, I want to get a Snapchat of us, me bobbing my head. So that's an advertisement for me that just went out from her. Right. So it's a lot of, you know, just it's grab an instant. It's like a, it's like a, a, a 10 second motion picture that you get to snap a second of chatting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it is really silly. Cause there's one girl DJ that I know and I watch her once in a while and she'd be driving in the car and a song comes on. She just Snapchat. Oh, I love this version of the song. And that's it. That's her Snapchat. And she has hundreds and hundreds of followers. Hmm. Jason, what are you hearing about Snapchat on, out in your neck of the woods? I, uh, well, of course, it's, we talked about the age demographic. That's probably the biggest thing. So I've always been in the wedding realm and my 12 year olds are not getting married tomorrow. So I've not really jumped on Snapchat yet. Uh, certainly, uh, we brought up wedding MBA as, as a topic a little earlier when we first came on. It's talked about there. Uh, Sonny and those guys talk about it. I think I've even heard uh, Andy Yvonne or, or one of those guys have talked about it as well. I've never gotten on it. It's actually one of the few social media networks that I don't have an account. <laughs> and I don't know how that's possible because I have multiple accounts on everything, but Snapchat's one I've never really jumped on. But in the, the 
topic that we're talking about tonight and how DJs can use it, I never really thought about it this way, but that is a demographic that could be using it for school dance marketing. Uh, and college kids, college, kid, age, college kids, right. exactly. Yeah. So I can totally see that being something that is going to push you to another realm outside of where most DJs are going. Cause even on all the other things we've talked about, uh, LinkedIn and Google, it, if it's not Facebook, I would probably, vent, and I'm going to pull a statistic out of the air because all statistics are made up anyway, right? Uh, I would probably say 60 to 70% of the people we're up against, our competitors, our colleagues are not on these other networks. So if you're on it, you're already one step ahead of the game. Just don't screw it up. Right. So I, do a little bit of research on Snapchat. It's probably worth it, particularly if you are targeting that, that lower age demographic. For weddings, I don't know if it's really the big one. For me, I've noticed that's shifting into Periscope, which you, you mentioned, but I think we're going to get there in a few minutes. So I'm not yep. going to go there. We're right. going to try to hit Twitter. And, uh, and, I have and two things I want to say about Snapchat real quick. One, as a person who creates uh, media and editing and trying to, to, to frame you know our videos and things and intros and outros, I hate the fact that it's not going to be there very long. That's one of the things I hate about it. And then yeah. this will make you laugh. Just Saturday night, my friend Rob, uh, t- uh, put on Facebook. He goes, my mom downloaded Snapchat. The end is near. Get right with Jesus. The end is near. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> That's funny. Um, one last one last thought. Um, Jeremy Landy, which uh, Jeremy does a lot of work with us for shooting videos on the field and such. He has been using Snapchat at his dances uh, to, you know, for requests, what have you. So he's got quite a few uh, teens from the different schools. Mm-hmm. interesting is that he had schools, these kids from these schools who are in charge of their, their proms and such, contacting him to book events via Snapchat. Yep. And that, well, yeah, like I said, if that, if that demographic is 13 to 26, yeah. and you're shooting for school dances, elementary, high school, sweet 16, graduation parties, uh, and weddings, because people are getting married you know, when they graduate. Um, so if, if you're catching them while they're in that, that, that process, um, it, it covers a lot of territory. Yeah, it very much does. And he, he was a, a good example of how, how, uh, it, that that's obviously how those kids, the kids are comfortable engaging. So, okay, let's keep going guys. We only have a few minutes yet and I want to get to that. So we can be switching around eight thirty ish or so. Um, let's, let's hit Twitter and then we'll finish up with Facebook. So Twitter age demographic is what to what guys what do you think I, i'm going to get you quick statistics here the, i oh. wrote an article a couple years ago about social media and so these statistics are a couple of years old it said the biggest difference is women are nearly five times more likely to have an active pinterest account uh, than any other site the largest percentage of those ages are 18 to 49 the wedding years city city dwellers are significantly more likely than rural drought dwellers i can't even speak i have a speech impediment um rural residents to be on Twitter, okay? So the city dwellers are more significantly to be on Twitter than the rural residents. A high percentage of Instagram users are uh, of uh, both urban and suburban. With Facebook ethnicity data unresearchable, a company called Pew Research Center shows that black and Hispanics are more likely than whites to be using Instagram and less likely to be using Tumblr. If that helps at all, I don't know. (laughs) Well, it, 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 it definitely, the Pinterest thing, I think we've, we've heard this from many sources, that it is where the the wedding bride aged person is. It's just, you know, the, the, that's, I think, kind of, I don't know, maybe maybe at Wedding MBA, uh, Jason, you've heard more about this, but it's it's a tough area to do marketing, really, and to break into. Is that, am I, am I accurate with that? I think for DJs, it might be tough on Pinterest, except we've expanded our realm to include lighting and in a very visual aspect, not just music, right? So it will be easier for us to pull in lighting designs, even uh, gobo designs, things like this that we can actually put up and showcase as part of our own business. But also the, the whole idea behind Pinterest is we're pulling from other sources too. So we can have collections in there. I actually have one, it's a very small one because I don't keep up with it, but I have a small one for uh, room design, lighting design, some things I can do. Some things I personally can't do, but I know the people in my local market who can help me pull those off. Sure. So if it's an elaborate design that I may not have all the, the material for and all the, all the parts and pieces to put it together, I know I can call up this person or that person to make it happen for my clients. So I become the one-stop shop. I just pick up the phone and call the people I need to make it happen. So I do think there is a little bit of charge behind Pinterest or 
that where we're at? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My gosh, we have so many going on. Um, I do believe there is a charge behind that for us to be there. I think we're being trampled on though by coordinators, florists, even photographers, because there's so much more of a visual media than we are as DJs. I would. Yep. I think that's a good, a very good point. Very good. My point. friend Steve does a really great uh, uh, marketing with his DJ business about weddings and stuff, where he tailors his Pinterest and his posts all about things to do with the bride. Like he said, one of his biggest, most reactions ever was uh, ideas to put in gift baskets for the bridal party, stuff like that. And that's Mm -hmm. stuff that I think in that sense can, in Pinterest, you can market, you know, they're going to stop and look and see what you're putting up there about, you know, the gift baskets and then pay more attention to maybe you as a business afterwards. Keywords keywords are really, really important in Pinterest as well. Uh, I suppose for the searchability. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, we have a we have a small presence there. My wife keeps up with it. Uh, she tends to be better with it, being a, a woman, you know, more in the in the vein of wedding world. But uh, we also f- uh, find, um, and Jason, I'll, I'll mention this because it might help you. Uh, we also find that uh, a lot of our stuff gets repinned when we pin it from somebody else. Uh, right. So it doesn't necessarily have to be all of your content. It just has to be cool and unique ideas that you think that you should want to share on your board. Um, and this stuff just keeps getting repinned and repinned. Uh, but, but the point is, is that it draws activity to your account. Agreed. And, and I think one other thing you can do with that is it allows you to find your voice, not so much as a business, but also as a personal human being. So for instance, when my mother passed away from cancer, it was four years ago, I started a board that was strictly around cancer. And that's how I got involved with Wish Upon a Wedding. And it just kind of snowballed from there, but it was a separate board because I was active in that community at the time that the repins were going on there, but they were being repinned from my business page, my business presence of Spencer weddings. So you're right. I mean, the repins are huge as far as the marketing uh, aspect goes, because most of those repins would drive traffic back to my boards in general. And then people would start following me from there. You know what my biggest repin board is? What? Cakes that look like DJ equipment started pinning cakes that look like dj equipment and i can't tell you how often those get repinned, <coughs> repinned, repinned, repinned. really Dude, hmm. but it's- <laughs> good idea yeah. yeah and i've taken a lot of cake pictures over the years that i've never posted and you just gave me an idea about yeah. maybe i should take that local folder and upload it to pinterest there you go okay guys let's we're gonna have time enough to just talk about twitter a little bit and then we're gonna have to bounce on to the to the nam twitter we've already talked about twitter a little bit uh with the the periscopes age age uh mj you didn't have an age of what uh, twitter you users are i'm looking through the article right now if you had that in there the article was ridiculously long and i went through every kind of statistic about when's and the the short the short version of periscope is i don't use it i haven't i don't have an account i don't know anything about it periscope is the ability to stream live and what happens is it goes and it is in your twitter feed so your your users that are out there are going to uh be notified, the ones who have signed up and such with that, are you notified that that you are on. We used uh, Periscope when we were at the, um, when we were recording the virtual expo this fall. And one episode we had 106 people watching because it went out and people were able to watch. And and so it's it's all done via your, your phone. In our case, it could have been a tablet, but I had the phone going and what's happening is people are commenting and it's just constantly and it's like, how in the world, in our case, we had the phone setting, catching them at the t- the desk and broadcasting it. And how you'd engage all those people who were chatting and qu- questions and because people were asking questions, but I couldn't see it until like at the end of it. And then it's like, oh, I went scrolled through and saw all these questions. So it's like, I, I, I'm clumsy with Pinterest or, or not Pinterest with uh, Periscope. I don't know that uh, we, we you know we've only used it a few times and we've had some really good numbers. We thought about even using it with these live chats, but the problem is that, again, it's capturing with the phone, so it would capture my audio and it would capture me. Or it would capture you know, this, but it wouldn't capture... Ooh, that's pretty cool. Hey, I'm in there. Me <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> like that. Actually, John, I, I'm going to chime in on this. I got two yeah. things for you. One, I pulled up some stats from 2014. Twitter has 271 million users. Between the ages of 18 and 49, you got about 55% of their population. And then uh, actually the research I'm looking at says not to discredit the 30 million users between age 50 and 64. Okay. Predominantly it's male. Um, there's nothing else broken down as far as I got one here for in you in the city or not, but go ahead. Story from April of 2015, 32% of the users are 18 to 29. 
29% of the users are 30 to 49, 13, cool. 50 to 65, and 6% are over 65. Does it give so a that mail? increased and that decreased from the 18 to 29 from what I was looking at, which was 35%. Does it give any kind of a male, female? I know Jason, yours just basically said that uh, there were more guys than gals. MJ, is there just, anything? Yeah, it says predominantly in 60% make over 30 grand a year. That's all mine says. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. Um, so from, my, from my experience, what, what I've, what we've used Twitter with, um, and used it, I think fairly successfully is when we're doing videos, cause you guys know that we do a lot of gear videos, do a lot of gear review videos, what have you. And when we shoot a video, especially if we catch them at a show and then we can actually tweet it to the company, then the companies will find that. And sometimes it's all the hashtags. I, I know some of you have made, made comments and made fun of our hashtags where it's, you know, the new light from uh, American DJ. And then it's, you know, we have Disc Jockey News. And then at the end, it's, it's hashtag American DJ, which of course now it's ADJ. But we would do that. And people were like, why are you doing the hashtags? It's because when that post goes to Twitter, it tags them and then people can track and, and it drives traffic. That's what we've been able to use Twitter in our world. When you get into the DJ world, let's talk about how DJs could use Twitter. we got about two minutes left, guys. Well, I, I think going back to the Periscope side of it, it was exactly where we were with Snapchat. It's a 24-hour feed. It disappears after 24 hours. So you can watch it live or you can rewatch it in that 24-hour period. And I actually just did an event in San Francisco with uh, Wedding Market Live. You were asking, John, how do I get that audio into the camera? She actually has a setup where she has an adapter that goes in the bottom of her iPhone. It's a splitter. And we actually ran a Sennheiser uh, camera kit from my mixing board with five live microphones into her, her uh, iPhone. Right. And we were pushing audio out that way. Everybody was getting picked up. It was a full-on panel discussion. People nice. were interacting on Twitter through the hashtags, not so much through the Periscope. Periscope. Very cool. I'm reviewing this. John got me these. I don't even know if they're out to the public yet. Uh, it's a straight up lab mic going to the phone where you can tie multiple together. So you can have two or three people sitting next to each other, all tied into the same thing, going into the same phone. Oh, that's cool. So if we were all in the same room, definitely yeah. an option. Uh, here's a quick, I'm going to share a screen real quick on Twitter. Um, you can see some numbers right there. If you want to look at it, men, women, all that kind of stuff. It's a year old. Anything interesting? Jumping out to you there. Uh, interesting. Women are are li more likely in, at this time to use Facebook than men. Hmm. It's interesting. I mean, it's yeah. those are the kind of things that I think. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think you know, depending on who you talk to, that that's it's gonna change to person to person. Yeah, for sure. Um, if I could share a quick note, and while Jason's here, he might be able to confirm the the three to make sure I haven't uh, led us astray. Oh, I'm uh, here Sonny, on Sonny from uh, uh, Sonny Googly, any or wedding wire. Yep. Yeah. Wedding wire. The, uh, the the second guy there goes Tim. through Sonny great links at Wedding Wire to uh, to talk about social media and the and his recommendation is the top three um, to stick with three and and then each year he updates you on what those three should be and if I'm not mistaken, here's where I need your help, Jason. It's Facebook. Uh, uh, in, uh, uh, Instagram and Pinterest. That sounds correct this I would, year. I would yeah. say that's yeah. probably pretty that, accurate. That's yeah. the current top three. Although I would say he's, they've kind of backed off of YouTube. I think it's kind of a given with YouTube now, just from a video standpoint. Uh, I mean, by, by all accounts, YouTube is a Google property. So you combine it with everything else, Google, and it really becomes the largest network out there. Well, I wouldn't alienate YouTube if you're already on it. Oh, for sure. And again, things can be tied together so easily nowadays that, that you know, I'm not on it, but yet I'm still active on it because things are showing up in the feed and such. Yeah, there's so, a, yeah. more, more is definitely better, but if you got to pick three just to get started, if you have no presence or you're less than three, those are the three you want to dive into tomorrow. Agreed. Yeah, good point. And like you said earlier, they're getting easier to tie together. So, you know, you post to one, you don't have to post to five or six. You post to one and it hits two or three. And yeah, no, that's always helpful. Cool, cool, guys. Well, we didn't get a chance to talk talk Facebook, and that's quite, that's quite all right. I wanted to just hit some of the others and give give our audience a little idea and a little taste of, of, what, uh, of what could be done with that. So, 
we're going to uh, Jason. You're going to bounce then for a little while and go get all. Yeah, I'm going to prepare a few things for our, our uh, chat in about a half hour. Here in a half hour. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to talk profit first when I come back, though. So that sounds. I'll be great. listening in. I'll be uh, here. Okay, that sounds good. We're going to switch and we'll we'll drop our our high end video clip here right now. And we are back on live. There we go. There we go. Okay, we are back to, for our second session, which is talking about my, how many did I end up with, MJ? We're talking NAM things here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're both counting, you count. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, my top 10. Yeah, top ten. Say, call me top ten, and I'm like, "What the deuce?" Are you? Are you? Uh, did you have them in order that, that I had them, or, or? Well, I did folders for pictures, so the folders for pictures then sorted by alphabetical. But I can go back to the thing. You can go through that order, and I can just bring the pictures. Okay, because so. let's let's actually go from the uh, bottom to the top because we've already talked about a couple of them at the top. Just tell me the name, and I'll bring. Um, we're going to start with the Eternal Lighting. So, gang, what we're going to be doing with this segment of the show tonight is we're going to be talking about. I think it's about eighteen. 18, 19 things, I believe, here that we're going to talk about that were things that were at NAM that that were little little moments that said, hey, that's going to be cool. That's something that we're going to be paying attention to in the future. So we're going to go through the list. And there's one item that as I was going and, and kind of getting the links for all these different things, we can share these links. And we'll put that in the description when we separate these videos. It will not go on the, the, the main video from tonight, but tomorrow you'll see this segment up by itself. That's when you will see and get the get all the links here. But yeah, one of you know the one item that that I did not see it now, but if I would have, I would have loved to have seen that, and we'll share that one at the end when we we have a few minutes. So, MJ, do you have that eternal eternal lighting, that Echo Mate, which you're looking at right there, ladies and gentlemen. This is from Eternal Lighting. This is their their IR Remote Control Plus. It's a little bit larger than the remote control that they have been using, and it has a few more presets and such, and it has the ability to control their their different lighting fixtures and it, it hooks up with something called their echo mate and their echo mate is basically and i believe it's running on a wi-fi signal and they can get there oh great you've got that too nice it's it's the ability with this little device to control it takes that signal from that remote and then it sends it out to their wireless dmx lighting and it can send out to a variety of wireless dmx lighting dmx lights not only um eternals lights but i believe it's using uh, w uh, wdmx also so it can then transmit that information. What's really cool is in his little demo video he did at NAM, he was standing several hundred feet away and he was able to control the lights in his booth and he had things programmed and such. So it's really, I think, for those who are doing uplighting and you want to have some cool uh, cool things going on with that, it's really something you want to check out. So again, we'll put the links in the description below on that for the video I tomorrow. To share that video, but I, I didn't know how well it would share... Uh, with the with the transmission. Yeah, that's that's that'd be tough because you're going across twice. Okay, let's see. Next one was uh, Monster, the Superstar Blaster portable Bluetooth boombox. By the way, this came out uh, during CES. It came out during CES, and I think it's still. I don't think they're they're shipping or or they're not actually for sale right. yet. But right. this this is a cool little and and Monster had actually quite a few. Bluetooth devices there, and what's interesting is when we went through the first time on Thursday morning, I was I was there just fairly early. That this was one of the highlights, and that was the new thing in the room. By the time we came back, I think Friday morning, there were like four more sound system, little mini sound systems that weren't there that literally were delivered by UPS from the manufacturer, manufacturer wherever that is, whoever that is. But this little Bluetooth is a high-powered Bluetooth boombox, and it, they have this this boombox in the room. You know, here's the old version, and here's the new version. Monster's got some pretty cool things. A, wire, a waterproof speaker, if you follow us on Instagram, you saw that. But there's some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, let's LD Systems is next with the Maui 5. The Maui 5, for some of you who have seen the video, you mentioned that, oh, it looks like it's kind of a, a, a Bose Compact, an answer or a, a, a takeoff from that. Yes, in many ways, it's, it's very similar in capability. I think the difference you might have is I think the Maui, uh, that's the curve, the Maui. Oh, yep. Is that the right one or wrong one? No, I've got the, we've got the wrong one. Did I, give you, did I give you the wrong one? The Maui 5 is a rounded base one. 
I'll have to go grab it. Yeah. That's, well, I can I can talk about it. Maui 5, it's, it has the subwoofer in the bottom, and then, of course, it's got the, the stick of speakers going up. But, of course, it's similar in the, to the Bose Compact that it only has the drivers in the upper part of that. It has the bag that goes with it to, to haul everything, and everything goes together very nicely. The cool part... The cool part is, I don't know who that is. Why is someone calling me? It's probably one of those, it's probably one of those, those companies that call and say, hey, I see you're going to the convention. You need to book a room. Yeah, I love that. Special. yeah it is. It's very, very special. Now yeah, looking at the air you call it. The, but the Maui 5, uh, LD Systems, a nice little compact sound system. What's really kind of cool, you could do the ceremony, you can do the, your dinner, you can do some different things with it. It's small. There it is right there easy to use and it's really got a lot of functionality built into the back of it for say if you were doing some if you were having an instrumentalist doing uh, some music during the ceremony they can plug right in and be able to have some nice quality sound we actually got to hear these a little bit they sounded good are they a big enough system to do a lot of stuff with no you know i i'm one who would i, I like to have more functionality and, and diversity in my sound system so i would probably go with one of the bigger bigger ones but for someone who's looking for something small quick that you can basically tuck under your arm and go the maui 5 would definitely be an option how big is that in compared to like the uh the stand-up uh bows very very similar in size okay cool very similar in size um, guys, if you, and, and for those of you watching, I, I apologize. I'm not really. I'm looking at my notes and such, so we're not following the chat as much as we typically would during this segment. And, and if you guys want to just hang on to questions and such, till we get to closer to the end, that would be awesome because then we'll be able to see them. Yeah, Ian, uh, I'm going for the waffles first, so I'm just saying it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> the chat. Go ahead, John. Smithson next. Martin next with the emulator KS32. This one was tough to find any images of beyond the ones we already I have. I got you covered. But Jimmy. I figured you found I something. Got boatloads because the thing is with this, go ahead, you talk about it, and I'm going to then show you more as we go along. This little guy, they had it hooked up to a, a Mac laptop. What this is, is, is if you're familiar with Mac World, gang, having a touch screen hooked up to your Mac is very, very difficult. There aren't many out there. The KS32 will allow you to control your DJ gear through your laptop, give you a touch sensitive screen there. That's a 32 inch screen, nice, large size. And what's really kind of a neat feature with this is that there's different controller skins that they have available. You know, there we go. We're looking at a, at a Newmark right, one right there. The version but, of the Newmark four tracks. Is that a four track? I can't, I can't see the middle of it. And so we have, uh, that is the NS seven skin. And I believe that's the pioneer DDJRX skin. So what it allows all, you to all do the same unit, but you can make it look like all of that. Yep, it's just on the side of it. And I guess we can't see that on the side of it. But on the left side, there's a spot there where you can go click and you can change it from one to the next. And yeah, none of these are really showing that. So that yeah. way you can go with a controller. You can move to a controller, you know, from a controller that you're used to to that. And then you can, you know, if you like it, you can stay with it or you can try other things and get the idea of what it can do for you. Very, very cool. And it's very sensitive uh, when, when they were hooking it up and such. Uh, it, it just really is nice. A couple of things, though, with it. You have to have a modern computer. You can't be using an old four- or five-year-old computer because it needs to have a graphics card. It needs to have the faster processor because it's doing, it's rendering that whole page or you know, getting the video out there, and then it's also managing that touchscreen. It's going to take up two ports on your computer. It's going to take up your a USB port, and it's going to take up the uh, the Thunderbolt port because you need to drive the video, and you're, you're also using that USB sensitivity for the touchscreen. For those of you who don't know, it's made by the company made this. If you've been to any expos or anything, uh, they've made it friendlier and more usable by the average person. And then the price is down. I mean, I, this particular unit with that big emulator, they were looking at I'm I want to say five to eight thousand MJ. Does that sound for the emulator? Yeah, the big one, yeah. The big one. No, yeah. I think it steps at fifteen. Oh geez, yeah, it, it's I'm inexpensive. Only that we went to we we you and I or you me and somebody looked at it. Um, yeah, it's on their website. They've got the prices for all the difference, but they're very expensive. And the new one isn't cheap, but it's also, you know, if it can, you know, the controllers and different things that it can do could be, uh, you know, price wise for what it, it it's right there. So <sighs> you didn't see did, any price. Did they even say the price for that one? 2400 can... 24 is what I've seen on that. Little thing? Yep, that little thing. It's a, again, it's a touch screen. 
it's a, a 32 inch touchscreen. And maybe maybe that's what it was an early uh, map pricing, and it's going to be different than that. They haven't talked much about it, and that occasionally happens where they throw out a big number, and it's kind of like the the techniques that they're trying to come out with, and they're saying to 4,000. I was talking to many people at NAM, and they're thinking that that's going to come in. The 1,200 is going to be coming in at, uh, there we go, yeah, 15 for the big one. But they're talking that they, they're thinking the techniques 1,200 are going to come in around at the $2,500 mark. Yeah. So. It's still, we'll talk about that on another show. Yep, yep. Okay, let's continue on. Uh, the Vimoda. Up next with the Crossfade Wireless. Do you say it Vimoda or Vmoda? Because I've heard it both ways. Um, you, know? you know, I'll have to think of what the what their rep. Yeah. I think the Vimoda is what I believe their rep said when I interviewed. Because I, I interviewed, uh, I want to say Dale. Anyway, I, I interviewed the uh, the one of the the guys at the booth. But what the, for a lot of us who have been to the different DJ conventions, you have seen uh, the Crossfade 100s is kind of their their main their main one. I've got a pair actually of. Uh, well, I think it's empty. I must have them. I must have them somewhere else. Yes, this is this is an empty clamshell from Vimoda headphones. <laughs> Sorry, but the, what they did is they wanted to come out with a wireless Bluetooth headphones that would give you the same sound quality or a similar sound quality to the Crossfade 100s, and they feel that they have been able to achieve that, even though it's it's using a Bluetooth signal. That they've tuned these a little bit differently, and they're good to go. The battery is in one of the ear cups, and I, I want to say that the, the runtime on that was a, over eight hours. I don't remember exactly what the number was, but it, it was to me it was like I, I in my head I said to me that it could be running all weekend for multiple shows. It uh, what is the what is the adapter that it's is it Bluetooth thing from like a phone or is it can you put an adapter in your headphones as you DJ and then use them as wireless dj headphones has anybody talked about that it's it's a it's a receiving so it would be coming off that's a great point it would be coming off a phone because there aren't any boards right now that are receiving bluetooth capability bluetooth might be able to come i suppose directly from the laptop but then that's going to change your queuing that's so that would be my only thoughts if it lags because yeah. i could see them pu pulling out a dongle with a quarter inch you know that's coming out of your headphones and let the dongle speak to the to the headphones as, as a you know, a sender and a receiver. And it, it can do that. You can wire directly yeah. in there also. So I wonder if, if the... If, you know, what I'm saying is a Bluetooth dongle that you just shove in the headphone slot. Oh, then, oh, yeah, yeah, that transmits it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't. They did not say anything about that. But now that you mentioned that, yeah, that's not that's going to be... going to make people jump. If they do that, not, you know, no longer choking yourself with a cord or like I've done a thousand times walk away and forget the headphones around my, my neck and... <laughs> oh, exactly. That would be that would be a really cool. There you go. There's an idea for you guys out there, Vimoda. Put a transmitter. Pay me with for it. the idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. What do we have? We're up to Fender. Fender this had a surprising one. So you caught me with this one. Yeah. This this is this was uh, as I went to, through the Fender room. Of course, they've got guitars and and all their different things. But they came out with the Fortis. The F. Uh, this is the 15 BT. This is their powered speaker. They've got a 15. They have a 12. They had a prototype for a 10. And from the Fender rep was basically saying they're not sure if they're going to make the 10 or not. Really, it just was the scaled down version in the prototype. When you see the actual video that we did on these, you'll see that uh, you'll see that 10 inch. They also have subwoofers. I believe they had a 15 and an 18 inch subwoofer for going below this. They were playing some music through these, and they sound they sound very good. I was I was really surprised. Uh, high high power in this. I don't I don't have the specs and such right in front of me, unfortunately, but they were a higher power something that you would use as you know your main main cabinets. It was interesting. I I was surprised. I didn't expect Fender to jump into the full range PA world, you know, because they've been doing guitar amps, and we've seen them in the Passport systems, but not not full range speakers. So that was interesting. Uh, let's continue on. I also saw that because you can see the little rubber stands on it. People talking about it as a stage monitor too. Yes. Not, yeah. So that that was. And that, that I, if they would they, they would have had them laid out as stage monitors, that probably would have made more sense as a Fender device to me. But they were set up yeah. kind of like a DJ display there, which is somewhat yeah. surprising. You see the up at the top and the bottom on each side. Yeah. The rubber feet. Yep. Yeah. That's that's for using it as a monitor. And they also had fly points stage from numbers. Last year looks like a just at so what they did is and then when he opens the dryer it's shrunk you know because the dryer shrinks everything snake eyes mini i think is going to be kind of a cool 
Purple Light. I, I like the Snake Eyes effect, and I mentioned this um, to a couple of, of people who are going to be buying some Snake Eyes. I think for a, a wedding DJ, it probably would be something because you don't see the same crowd you know, on a regular basis. As a school dance DJ, I think it's and so, I'm going to say semi-unforgettable that the first time you would go through the schools, I think it would be a great light. I think it's one that the kids wouldn't, after you, I don't think I'd go use it more than twice at a school. Because I think it's such a a unique fixture that the kids would be like, oh, been there, seen that. Compared to some moving head fixtures where it has, and, and granted, you can program it with the DMX and, and make it look differently, but you wouldn't be using the, a lot of the capabilities of it. So great light. It's going to give you some effects, but I don't know if it's something that you would use year in and year out if you're a high school dance DJ. Uh, Electro Voice. Now, Electro Voice, this is kind of interesting. Um, th their big thing at the show this year was they, they had a nice sound room, uh, and we had a, we shot a nice video on that where they set up the, all their speakers, and they had lighting in the ceiling, and it was really cool. It was just on, around the walls. But the big thing that they were talking about at the show wasn't so much the speakers, which they were demoing, was their new ND series of microphones. The microphones basically have a variety of different microphones. On the right, you're seeing the instrument microphones. It's the four and the right. The four and the left are the microphones that are meant for what we do. You've got uh, you've got the one on the very left, which is a kind of a general purpose. Then the second one is general purpose with a switch. The third one is starting to be more of a cardioid pattern. And the fourth one is for those times when you're in a very loud environment where you are going to be out there and on, you know, really on stage in front of, of the speakers and everything and where feedback could really become a problem. That fourth microphone is more expensive, of course, because you're getting more expensive as you go. But that microphone will allow you to be in a very loud environment in front of your speakers and really not have any problem with feedback. So very, very monodirectional. Very much so. Very much so. You really have to be on that element for that one to be heard. But for singers in loud environments or even DJs who are in situations where you're into that microphone in front of the speakers and leading the crowd, it's it's going to be a great option and you're not going to have to worry about the feedback. So. There's also something else that EV is supposed to be coming out with, and we've heard, we had heard rumors about it, and so we're going to talk about it just a little bit. EV was was working on, and this is from the grapevine. I've not heard this from EV themselves, but they supposedly are working on a Bose type of speaker, meaning it's a line array. Yes, that's what I've heard now through the through the grapevine. I may be wrong. Bose or their new line, their Bose they, new bendable line array. They were not the not the bendable line array. They were that EV was working on something that would be similar to like the Bose L1. Okay, is what I've heard. Now they did introduce new line array things, but it was you know concert line array. So maybe there's some maybe that's what the the story is. But I've heard it from a few different sources that they were surprised that I didn't hear about it and them. So we'll we'll have to see if that was just a a rumor and there's nothing behind it, or if you know in in six months all of a sudden or next fall we hear ho ho. They have a high-powered version of the Bose. I believe that, that that makes sense because if the Bose, believe it or not, very few people know the Bose were originally created to be stage monitors for a band. So there's going to be four of them in each corner of the stage pointing towards the center so that the band can always hear what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they've then been adapted into a, an out broadcast thing you know, with EV being, you know, look at them and Fender, different ones that are about, you know, live instrument stuff. Wouldn't be surprised if they come out with that. Makes sense to me even. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Cause that would be you know, that the way Evie's really been stepping up their game with their speakers in the last few generations with ETX and EKX and such. If they did it, that would be a, a, a neat, a neat cabinet. Okay, uh, let's jump to Newmark. We've got the CD Mix USB is our next product that, uh, and that that unfortunately has a product guide PDF that uh, that it came from, but the. Nope, because I oh, you, opted for disc jockey news you, special. Did you do this? Uh, this was part of last week's thing. My 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 blast outs. I did a bunch of stuff like this where I made it special just for us. Nice, nice. Well, you did a wonderful job. Cool thing about the CD mix. CD mix USB is one of the 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 CD mix earlier generation. This has been around. I think I think uh, Chris was saying fifteen or more years. I know people that have them and use them even. Yeah, exactly. I've got one of the early ones that had the RCA outs, the two, and it's it was very simple. It it did its job and it still works. It's still sitting probably on a shelf over there. It's, they just there, but they just work. What this is gives you the ability to do is you can play from CD, that you see your CD players down there, and you can also go from thumb drives. So you can have your music on that. You can go in and through folders, you can access it. You've got a little bit of a jog wheel for uh, manipulating your songs and such. 
I've got some microphone control there. And the part that I like the most about it now compared to what I have over there is that it has XLR balanced outs. When I had it, it did not have that capability. So it really becomes, for those who, who need a backup player, it becomes that device where you can have, actually have it as a backup. That's uh, what my friend uses his for at weddings. It's just sitting there as a backup. He has the older one, you know. Yeah. That is strictly there. And he'll he even... Believe it or not, burn CDs of the essential songs for like you know the intros and stuff onto a CD just to have them in case something dies. He yep. can, you know, that's his back, which is smart. A lot of very, work, but it's really smart. Very much so. That's a, a great idea for for backup, and it, and it's not. I mean, the price of those things are just cheap, mm -hmm. inexpensive. Though I don't want they aren't cheap, but they're, they're you're not. It's not a huge investment. Less okay. than controller. Yeah, for surely. Okay, let's let's kind of zip through the last ones here. ADJ Airstream Y. Fi pack. Arnaldo talked a little bit about this last night and how he's going to rewire his house and bedroom for with lights. <laughs> I, I had a conversation with someone right after that about this. You know, now, and I'm thinking, oh, dude, I've got to do this. Back in the day, we used to have a device from ADJ that was eight little red switches to turn lights on, and it had kind of a data cable that would go to the the power pack. Well, now it's all wireless. You can control it with your cell phone. You can do a lot of cool things with timers on it and scheduling of lights to go on and off. And you can put these around. You can actually control multiple of these with your device. So you can have some of them, say if you had multiple trees around a dance floor, you could have them go around and you could set it up so that, say, channel E on each one would go on for, you know, maybe that was your, your oh God, goodness, I'm really, but maybe that's your old vertigos and you want to use them again. So your vertigos all go on. Then you can shut that off and maybe you wanted to go to a D on the right side. You can have it set up so the D would go on, whatever. There's just so much you can do with it because they have really, you know, once you go I'm into gonna, that digital. I'm going to dummy down the use for you because this is the way it is. When I, most of my dances I do, the smaller ones are audio activated lights only no dmx but when i get to a slow dance all the activated lights are still going nuts but with yep. this i can easily clip those off and just put one simple little star thump something or other you know that that makes it look like a slow dance yeah and then when it comes back on click the other ones back on exactly and let them go crazy because it's all all right there and and again it's wireless so you have a range with that it's really a neat little system we'll, we'll have to we'll watch for the pictures from arnaldo's bedroom with his mario people when they've got the lights going on yeah that's that's, that's another show okay let's move on uh we've got about five left the chauvet dj had the swarm wash fx now the swarm wash f there's there's multiple different versions of the swarm and the swarm and you're seeing these this from a couple of different companies this is the fx is a little bit different because it has inc incorporated a wash if you see those red circles all the way around it is giving us a wash and i believe it's rgb Red, green, blue, and UV on the outer circle. There is UV on it, but I just don't know if there's a white in there too. Then in the, the kind of rectangular areas, you're getting a beam effect. And I believe that's RGB and that might be white. So red, green, blue, white. Then in the middle of it, the very, very middle, you're getting a, a, a laser right there. Get it down there. You've got a little laser, and then around that you have a strobe. Those little LEDs, little white, are all strobes. And what's cool about it is we have these linked together, and they're running an auto program. Those little strobes, will, they can chase, and they'll flash, and they'll do some alternating things with that. The lasers will go. And, and it's really I, – I, I think this is going to be a real winner for DJs because now you've got that wash effect that you like with your floods. You've got some beaming effect. You've got the ability to have some strobe, which you probably won't use at weddings. But you can turn those lights, all those white on – if you're controlling it individually, and you can have kind of a wash on the floor if you need to brighten the, the dance floor for something. So I think the swarm wash effects is definitely going to be a hot light. They... It, it works for the kind of stuff that I do where that one light now gives me a wash, a motion, and some and some flashy flare. Yeah. All, all in one thing. Exactly. One of them. So really, that, two, two of those. You a laser in the center. Is that correct? That is correct. Yep. Yeah. So that's right there. I, that's the whole put two of those, and it's going to replace four of mine. Yeah, exactly. Just cut my, my lighting in half for, for that type of thing to wash into motion. Yeah, yeah. Just it's a, I think it's cool. a really I think that adding the wash is definitely a great idea. Do you know if that's out yet? Uh, no, no. It's just I think it was just introduced, so it's probably going to be a couple months out on that one yet. Uh, the next is Rain, the Rain MP <laughs> twenty fourteen. This is a a, ro a a rotary mixer, and the biggest claim to fame I think with this particular mixer is that the the quality of the inner components are above probably most mixers that we're used to. 
the guys put the technology and the the things in there with you've got the the different uh, frequency cuts to go from zero to to 100 on those things so you can actually do a full cut at every at every level of that and those are things that you just you, you don't see in a lot of boards I was standing there talking, uh, just finished up with the the interview of the guy, and I was standing back as he was talking to someone else, and another guy came up behind me and, and basically made the statement that, you know, real DJs couldn't use this because there's no crossfader, which I thought was actually kind of funny because the gentleman who was demonstrating on it was scratching and mixing, and he was doing a very, very good job of being a real DJ, I thought. It's intended because I uh, also want to point out that this is not the only one they have out. Yes. Right? Out. One last year, and it's really here's where the confusing part gets in. The rain, um, they're the two of them together. The one on the left came out last year. The one on the right just came out this year. Last year's was the MP 2015, come out in 15, and the MP 2014 came out in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Going back, uh, just double the everything. Like it, it is, like you said, intended for higher quality. So it's you know it's not going to be the average thing you're not going to see this. I, I honestly believe you're not going to see it as a DJ thing. You're going to see it as a tie in point for other things, even though it can be used. I'm not saying it can't be, but because of the price, the one on the left is running $3,000. So the one on the right, the new one is going to be a little lower, but still that's a lot, you know, to have as your, you know, I don't know. I think it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's going to be what a lot of DJs, I think it's, there's a very narrow market for that, but that's, that's yeah, my it's, uh, two, two deck mixing with uh, additional USB X, uh, two aux line ins, one on each channel, three audio playback, five stereo record channels on each USB port, mic inputs, FX loops, etc. So it's really intended to be tied into a lot. And then the four, the, the 2015 from last year is double all that. So. When, one of the questions I did ask MJ on this one is if, because it can, you can switch sources on that, and if a person could have one computer hooked up, because it has two computer uh, USB inputs, if one computer could be performing and then they could be switching out the second one, as we've talked about on other controllers, mm -hmm. and that being a big thing, and that is that is designed for that also. Right. So it can be switched live. It's interesting. It's not for everybody. Um, you know, it's me. I kind of look at it and shake my head, and it's all about that the novelty factor i think even though it's a quality piece of equipment i'm not knocking it saying it's cheap but a really small market audience for it. I, I i think you're right on that one okay we've got four left here and then we'll actually three left here and then we'll we'll be uh, ready for jason in just a few minutes um denon uh we mentioned this last night the vl12 turntable the new turntable that uh, denon came out with they came out with some new gear at the show. They came out with a new controller, which we've talked about. You guys got to see that, the, the uh, MCX 8000. And the VL12 is going to be, I think, a, I, I think in many ways it's going to be right up there Well, as this conversation with the techniques coming back out. I think in many ways the VL12 is going to maybe not steal that thunder, but it's going to stand up very well for itself. It seems to be a really solid piece that they put together. And I'm, I'm excited for when I get the production, the final production ones ready to go and to uh, hear what guys like MJ, who have a longer history of working with, with tables than I, what they're thinking of it. I can honestly tell you what I think will make it sell if it's cheaper than the techniques, cheaper than used techniques, not, yeah. not the new ones that they just released. I, I think that's probably a, a very good point. A, a, but I don't think it'll be cheaper than that, I'm, I'm going to guess. Yeah. Again, I, I think we're back to a small audience. Yeah, it very well could be, and it's I don't remember. Part, like you have to look at the most the majority of the DJs that use the turntables and the DVS systems are not the forty plus year olds doing weddings. They're club guys in college or, or just starting out in life. They don't have all that extra money, you know. So they're they're not going to be able just to throw several thousand into a, each turntable doubled and then buy another you know two thousand dollar rain mixer to go with that. Yeah, and I'm not seeing any pricing online. I just thought I would check and see. If no, there was no pricing on this. I looked on this specifically, and other people asked me even. So, okay, so let's continue on here. Uh, we got a couple. Let's see, Pioneer. Pioneer, of course, came out with the new powered speakers, the XPRS speaker line, which includes uh, two-way tops, powered tops, high power tops, and they have the sub. Um, and the sub is actually the one MJ. If you, if you're, I which, have all of them, so it's going to take me a minute to yep. scroll okay, go through ahead. the sub. Here we go. The, the sub, sub okay. is the the interesting one, I think, of this configuration because I think the tops, you know, they're from what we're seeing in specs and such, they're they're really, really showing some good specs, some some sound pressure and and handling and such. But if that that 18 inch sub is what I wanted to, uh, if we can 
if we can pop that one up. That's the back of the sub, or the bottom, however can, you want to say it. Yep. Uh, I'd like to see the front of it, if we possibly could, if your picture shows that. Pop me up to full screen. Oh, crap. I'm, I'm sharing, and it's not even... <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing you all these pictures. There we I go. how cool it is, and, and I'm not even sharing it. Yeah, because so, there's the... There's the front. Oops. Yep. Large. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Now what this is is it actually has two drivers in it, compared to many subs that that only have one. It's a heavy. It's a beast, but yes. it has two drivers in this thing, which is in in that line is going to really it's going to make a thump beyond what atypical because they've got it ported and they've got the angles and they're basically. Uh, probably the closest that that just you know that what people would be familiar with is the uh, Sirwin Vega earthquake. The way those were ported and tuned and such. I think that this is following that concept. I'm really I'm I'm excited to hear that in a large situation where they can just really make those things buck. That could be a uh, a very very cool, very cool speaker. Sub like that is a serious thing. That's 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 going to kick. Two of those especially. Oh yeah, for surely put that two of those together and you're, there's the tops yeah you're going to be you know putting maybe two 15s above that sub uh, above ones teens here which are which because i have them all numbered and i can't remember what they're numbered now yeah that looks like the 12 mm -hmm. one of the things of course is you look at that that horn they were talking about that it has a very very wide but narrow shallow short anyway it, it it's a very wide dispersion but it doesn't have a lot of of high, in this particular case the way that the tweeter set or the horn is set, it doesn't have a, a high top to bottom. But it can also be turned if you're going to be using it as a monitor, which is kind of a more a more popular thing nowadays to be able to have your your high horn turned for it, depending upon the application. I apologize. I don't have these. No, that's good. You, you've got you've done with it. better numbers so that yep. I can say this is the fifteen. This is the this. this yeah, is no, that's fine. That's that's good. So that's, this is the twelve. I do have that. That's yeah, the twelve. That's the twelve, yep. That's the fifteen. That's the back of the 15, then the subs. So we got the 12, back of the 12, 15, back of the 15, sub. Is that back? That would that would be back. Has it setting on the floor? Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. That would be yes, yeah, sitting on the floor before transport, and then you would tip it up. Yeah, so. you flip it up to transport. It. Okay, let's Sorry, let's wrap up. We've got. Guys. We've got two things left. Uh, the last one is the Mackie Reach. We talked about this last night in uh, the, the with Arnaldo. We talked about uh, the Reach. The Reach what, is. What do you want to start with? Because I have the, all of the pictures in better detail tonight. Oh, well, let's just put them up. Let's just last talk about. Last night was terrible. I, I had like not very good. There, this, there. This shows the range first. So what you're seeing on the right of this this image is the little the spot where that little speaker was. We really couldn't see that last night. It's below that control. That control area is is to do some manual control. You can do a little bit there, but the bulk of this is controlled by an app and you, by your phone. Yep, there we go. There's a the little speaker. Now that there's a little speaker on both sides. You can either enable both of those or disable one or both of those. So you've got the ability to have that 220 degree dispersion on that. And that was a shot. Yeah, I was showing it with those yep, on. That's go. how far yep. your dispersion is. So that is that's they refer to that as a personal monitor area. So that'll be kind of interesting to see how that is. And on the left, as you look at the left speaker in this 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 uh, shot, you can see that the cones. You've got one that's faced, you know, in, one's straight out, and one's towards the outside. The idea again is they wanted to have a wide dispersion kind of line array effect with that. And there's a better shot of the way they've got the the. That's um, where they're horns. sitting in the front, underneath the uh, screen. Under the grill there, yeah. So that's that's that is a, a very cool system that can be controlled, as you see, by by the, your device. So in this particular case, they're controlling it with an iPhone, but could be done with a a tablet. And you can set limiting and gains and different things and volume levels and and EQing and really to contour your sound depending upon what you're doing. So I think it's going to be a very a very cool box if those little side monitors can hold out. My only question on that is because as a DJ who monitors like i said i'm mixing and monitoring all the time and i complain about like the bose speakers have a horrible bleed back and to me saying that that is a monitor for me to hear it's not it's a bleed back for me to have one it needs to be zero distance from me so i can hear it hitting me so having yeah. those out here and saying i'm monitoring off something that's eight feet away from me it, we're not going to use it as a monitor yeah, I, I think that's going to be. I it's think the be loud bleed to us, and we're going to like let's turn that off. But that's yes. part of the people. If you don't, if you're not one that needs to mix and cue, it might make it sound great. 
Yeah, I think if you're if you're a KJ host where you're doing the the type of shows where you have people singing to the words that are going across the screen that is related to the music that is played without lyrics being sung. <laughs> Karaoke for those who, who who say it that way or karaoke if you are a friend of John's. <laughs> but if you're a karaoke host, the that's I think that's where that's that's going to Never be. Never even thought anyway. of that. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but beyond that, I don't I don't know if it's really going to be a, a, an actual. Uh, one last thing before we bring Jason on is the thing that was out there that I didn't know existed until I went looking for pictures earlier today was from American Audio, and American Audio on their site is showing some new speakers. We've talked about the CPX speakers, which is we've we've tested those in the office against actually some of the more expensive, uh, better named I'm going to call it, and I only say better named because people refer to that, that look at that company speaker company as a great name in the industry. Uh, we've we've compared those side by side a 15 inch from that company to a 15 inch in the American Audio CPX, and the CPX actually sounded better. This is the CPX 18-inch subwoofer. They have a 15 and an 18-inch subwoofer. 15 here somewhere if I can bring it up. I didn't, I didn't see these at uh, at NAM. I don't know if they didn't have them ready to go, but wow, the the CPX speakers. We've been really happy. We've used these um, at different events. We actually used the CPX speakers on our. We we did some work with uh, Articat snowmobiles, where we had sound in their booths, and they were traveling around the country with these CPX speakers, and they worked worked wonderfully and they sounded great but you're going to tell me that you, you strapped one to a, to a snowmobile <laughs> no <laughs> no we didn't we didn't strap one to a snowmobile we did we did strap they were or they were hung or flown on trussing and and again they did a wonderful job and and price wise you know for the the power and such it was you know just uh, really only bottoms great, yeah. that's all they showed they the tops came out i think last year the year before okay, okay. so the cpx tops in it and the cpx i believe there's an eight I'm not sure if there's an 8, but there's a 10, 12, and, and 15. There might be an 8, too. Yeah, there is an 8. So they've got all four, and now they've got the subs. So I'm really, really interested to hear how those mesh with those tops. So mm -hmm. so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our, our look at the my top 18 <laughs> for NAM. We'll be at top 40 here in about 10 minutes. Exactly. Yeah, we're just going to keep on going. So we're going to have videos of pretty much everything we've talked about except that subwoofer. And then... Hundreds more. I mean, the uh, that uh, Jeremy and Ken and myself, we are out there and shooting a lot of a lot of stuff. So, a lot of great stuff at Nam, and we'll be getting that information out. MJ, you've been putting a lot of stuff out there, so you can go out to the Rewind Reports Facebook page, check that out. And that is great, great stuff. If there's anything that you guys want to hear, see us or, or, or us to give detailed talks about, let us know. Say, hey, what about this? And we can try to get you all kinds of information and do maybe a show on it or a special or. Or just ramble endlessly into a Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> into a Snapchat. <laughs> uh, I've got 15 just, seconds to tell you about everything right now, and here's the speaker, and then we're going to do this and that. I think I could do it. There's times where I feel like I'm doing that. <laughs> you just go. Okay, Jason Spencer is up next here. Jason, there he is. Oh, gosh. I, we can just do this in a Snapchat. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, 15 we'll seconds, we'll be done. I like Vine better, so we're gonna do seven seconds. Oh, so we're gonna do seven. Oh my gosh! I don't, hang on here. We'll get there's the URL. We're done. Okay, good. Okay, great. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> oh, you had to you had to do something that would make it. So maybe you'd like take it from one side of the screen to the that's other right. side. Just, do, 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 do. So that we'll, way, it just we'll come keeps, up with that in a little bit. Oh gosh, how you guys doing? Doing well. Doing well. We've gotten through. We're a little bit behind schedule, but we're not too bad. I didn't go anywhere. Nope. Okay. You've you've got you've got uh, the floor. I first the off, floor. first off, you've got. A, a presentation coming. You have put this presentation together. I kind of tell people a little bit about what the profit first. Give us a little bit of background on that because this is something that oh my gosh. has been, I want to say, life changing. I don't think that's too strong of it's too strong of, of, of terminology when it comes to people just changing how they they run their business. Absolutely. Well, and you you mentioned earlier you've read the book, yes? Yes. I, or you have the book, <laughs> one, or, one or the other. No, I I, I I'm a, a, a I'm you did very, read it. Okay, I'm so, a very so active reader. So you understand reader. the concepts. So some of these things, if you want me to indulge on them a little bit, by all it, means, just spit it out and say, hey, go a little bit more on this. But profit first in a nutshell was a way for me to get my business healthier, and that's actually the presentation that I'll be doing at Mobile Beat. So that's the first hour of the workshop that I'll be doing as well, because anybody who registers for the workshop is going to actually get some paperwork to go along with that presentation. So they're they're going to actually get the full deal, and it's all because I really can't condense it down into forty five minutes. 
I'm sure. going to do my best to do that. I've been doing it actually since June of last year. So um, you already heard I did it at a wedding at BA. I did it at Arm DJs last year as well. Uh, a few other local networking events here and there. And every time I tweak it a little bit because I keep getting feedback as far as maybe give me a little more details on this or a little less on that, or this isn't quite clear. So that's actually one of the biggest reasons I'm so excited to present this at Mobile Beat is because I'm even learning from others in our own industry and not, not just DJs, but wedding industry in general and events and, and entertainment. I'm learning more of how profit first really, really works for us because it is a little bit different. I mean, you read the book and some of these businesses in the book are $50 million and up and, and you, you start looking at those numbers and you go, how on earth am I going to apply this to my little, you know, $150,000 DJ business or, or less in many cases. Right. How am I applying this to my, my business when you're talking about these giant companies? And the beauty of it is it's all based on percentages anyway. So, and we fine tune those percentages based on the revenue that your business makes. So if you are making less than $250,000 a year, we have a certain set of numbers that work for that. If you have employees and you're making up to 500 or a million dollars a year, we adjust those numbers accordingly so that you can operate your business, so that you can pay yourself, the business owner, an actual salary. I mean, how often do we hear, oh, I'm a, you know, I, I made 50 grand this year. You go, really? Well, well, how much did it cost you to make 50 grand? Uh, 45 grand. So, so you made five grand this year. Exactly. <laughs> so that's really what you took home. That's what you made. That was your profit that year. So, now Jason, Jason, before you go, yeah. before you go too far, let's let's talk a little bit about the. Why, what, you know, profit first, what does that mean? Because if, if folks aren't, they haven't read the book, sure. they might be really struggling with, like, you know, what, what, why does he, you know, what, what's profit first and how is that different than, than a traditional system? So the traditional system, the, the old school way of doing it was to take your sales and you would take away your expenses and whatever you were left over with was considered your profit. And most businesses will do this once a year at the end of the year. They go through all their numbers, whatever they sold as their revenue, whatever they had to do to actually earn that revenue, whatever's left over is what they've paid themselves and their profit. Usually that's a smaller number than it should be. That's what we found just across the board. It's a smaller yeah. number than it should be. There are a few, few businesses out there that are really taking this to the top, but, but most of us we're struggling here and there. And, and for me, I'm a wedding business primarily. So I hit this nook in the year where nothing really happens. And for, for Northern California, that's around November timeframe because it's Thanksgiving, it's the holidays. Uh, engagements are just starting to happen. So my phone isn't quite ringing yet. And, and I get this little taper off in my income. And so I would have this hiccup where I would start to freak out a little bit because I just didn't have enough money because I made it all early in the year and I spent it already. Yep, for sure. So profit first allows you to actually start taking those numbers out before you start spending it. So we set up multiple bank accounts in the process. We, we kind of, for those of you that are familiar with the Dave Ramsey system of envelopes, or even maybe you had a grandmother that actually worked off of envelopes. She would yeah. put money in there. She'd stash it in a cabinet. It was only used for that specific purpose. That's pretty much what we're doing with profit first is we're taking money out first that is profitable. And then we're taking money out that is actually just for you, the business owner, to pay your own salary. We set aside money for our tax account because I'm sure many of us have gotten that tax bill and we start to freak out a little bit because it's a lot higher than we anticipated it to be. That money is already set aside. And then our remaining funds, this is what we're going to operate our business on. So instead of expanding ourselves and just eating up all the money that we're taking in right away, we're actually starting to segment it out. And we're actually finding better ways to utilize that money, a more effective way to use that money. And that's the, the kind of the general concept behind Profit First is really trimming your expenses and boosting the actual profitability of your company. And I think I think one of the cool things that I took from the book is that when you change it, it takes time. And you mentioned percentages. But yet once you have that, that mechanism in place that you can scale and grow with it because it really does promote healthy growth within the business. Absolutely. And I, I was actually just watching the author of Profit First today on, on a, a podcast. And I got to go pull that figure because it's not in my presentation now. But he said, uh, and he told where this was from, I can't think of it right now, but 5% is the number that actually is what defines a business as profitable. If you're not making 5% in your business at the end of the year, you are not a profitable business. Many of us are not doing that. It's unfortunate, but many of us are not. 
And so Profit First finds a way to get you to that 5%. And even the more healthier businesses might be as high as 10 or 15%. And I've seen some of those businesses and it's amazing how they're doing it. You can nudge the numbers around a little bit. They are flexible. But the idea behind it is, is you're taking your profit first in the business. It, it sort of forces you to become a little more innovative in the way that you do things. So you're going to start trimming expenses. You'll have to find ways to trim them because the money is not there for you to use anyway. So for instance, some of the ways that I've done it, I've changed my phone system up a little bit. Uh, I, I've changed how I'm storing certain files. My promo only subscription, I've actually kicked it down a little bit because I found there were a lot of things that I was just not using. Uh, you can look, and this is in the book as well, but it's, it's across the board when you talk about marketing and, and anything else. Uh, the 80-20 rule, Pareto's overlap. So I actually found that only about 20% of the music I was getting from promo only, I was actually using. <laughs> so I went in, yeah. I said, well, how can I get rid of that other 80% and save some money in the process? So I actually trimmed out about, uh, what was it, $35 a month from my promo only bill, just by taking a few minutes to look at it, call them up, say, hey, I'm not using this but I am using this, what do you have for me? And all these little things you can do add up. And that's really, it, it's just little changes, but they add up to the end to be something much bigger. Yeah, for sure. That that idea that we're, it, 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 when I was reading that, it was almost like a and the idea of rethinking some of the lessons that they we were being taught five to 10 years ago, when the idea was being taught that, you know, the idea, you, well, just, you should outsource this, you know, go and, and put these things on the back burner or you don't do those things and have other people do those hire someone to do that and and as you're going and you're you're turning things around now it's like huh i i really feel like i need to account for those dollars a lot more and throwing them you know willy-nilly to the wind right. and then hoping that there's enough money at the end of the month to put something you know in my checkbook you know the, the, but that's of, not a bad thing though john i mean, I mean to, to outsource some of those things may make sense for instance, if, if you're not versed in HTML, if, you're not, uh, if you don't know how to code your own website, don't spend a month trying to code a website when you can pay somebody uh, you know, to do it in half the time or less. Right. Um, now, I'm not saying you should go out and pay somebody $10,000 to do something that somebody could do for even less than that. Certainly don't go just throwing money at the wall and seeing what sticks. But <laughs> there are ways to alleviate yourself. Do I need to be answering the phone all day long in my business? I probably can do that, but there are other things that I could be doing. And it's that whole working in your business versus on the business type yep. of argument. And so bringing some of those people in allows you to be working on the growth of your business as opposed to necessarily being in the business. And that's really how businesses grow anyway, right? Is sure. you're not so much in the business as much as you're on the business. And I think, again, when, you, when you're looking at your, the dollars and what you have, you're going to be making I, I'm going to call it more intelligent decisions on how do you spend those dollars. It's probably the, the ultimate part about that. And there are going, are going to be times to outsource and there are going to be times to make this purchase and times to re evaluate and say, hey, I just don't need that anymore. And I can right. leave you. Yeah. Right. It's, it's interesting because some of the DJs that I've actually walked this through, you end up a little flip flopped. You're where you're, you're, either your profit or your take home pay as a salary, which can be combined because technically that's your income. So if you look at that number of what you're taking home as a business owner versus the expenses your business is, is putting out, it's usually flip flop. So maybe it should be about a 60% take home pay and, and more of a 30% expenses. So it might be the other way around where it's 30 take home and 60% going out on expenses. This happens primarily with, with businesses that have payroll. So they have somebody they have to pay. It gets eaten up in expenses, but we start trimming those things out and they look at me and they go, I, I, I can't, I can't run my business on this set yeah. number for expenses. There's no way I can do it. I mean, look at my history. This is what I've been doing. And you go, it's okay. We're not going to jump to that drastic number right away. We're going to start slowly incrementing out to it. So maybe it was 60%. We'll drop down to 58% or 55% just so they start to get the feeling for it. And even in the profit account, if you're not profitable, we start you at 1% because we don't want you to feel a pain as you start doing it. We want you to realize 1% is not going to hurt you. And so yeah. you do that for a period of time. And when you, you get that, that confidence of, hey, I can do 1%. You know, well, how about 2%? Okay, I'll do one more percent, see what happens. And as you start sliding that scale a little bit, you realize maybe I didn't need to go and, and have uh, that, that business lunch at, at the giant expensive seafood place, we could have actually just gone down to Red Robin and kind of, you know, 
relaxed a little bit there. So, or, or even better, you know, just go to Starbucks and have a cup of coffee instead of that $15 meal. These are things that you start looking at and you, you are critical of them. You become critical of the expenses. Yeah. And I think that's, that's one of the, the big things that I took out of that is that there's going to be a, a period of pain as you're changing your system. And it doesn't have to be done completely, as you're saying. It can be kind of a slow, gradual. But there is going to be pain with it, and there's going to be, and I hate to say this, you're going to have to actually think about those types of business things a little bit. You do. You do. And we, the nice thing about the profit first system is if you implement it correctly, I don't, I don't want to say any other way of putting that, but if you implement it correctly, that pain is alleviated as much as possible. We try not to cause a pain point because think about, you know, why are we scared of spiders? We're scared of spiders because when we were little, our parents told us to be scared of spiders, right? I mean, yeah. kids are not scared of anything. They'll go up to touch a hot pan with their plate. You know, they'll do anything, right? Yeah. They're not scared of bugs. They're not scared of spiders until we tell them to be scared of these things. <laughs> it's the exact same thing with your business. You, you, you're not really scared of it until somebody tells you you should be. And we find ways to get around that. So it's just a, and I start off my presentation talking about axioms. It's things that we believe because that's what we've been told to believe. Sure. And that's where, where the confusion of profit comes from. And actually the, the whole system in itself is built around axioms. It's built around uh, our own habits. And you know, what is it that we're doing on a regular basis? And so I dive, I dive into habits in the presentation as well, but we leverage our existing habits to make our businesses more profitable. We're not trying to change what you already do. We're just trying to work with what you already do. Sure. That, that's really the big concept behind it. I mean, there's no secret. It's not a new concept by any means. I, I already mentioned you know, yeah. in personal finances, it's the Dave Ramsey system for those that are familiar with it. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with that, just go back to your grandmother when she used to put money in envelopes and stash them up there and say, this is for groceries at the end of the week. And, and this yep. is for us to pay the electric bill at the end of the week. And that money's not coming out for any other reason. Yeah, very that much same so. concept. I just want to say that that's how I bought my motorcycle last year. <laughs> a little bit here, a little bit there. Every time somebody tipped me with something, it went straight in there. And I did learn that from my grandmother. <laughs> See, it works. <laughs> it works. It works. But you know, what's interesting is John mentioned uh, that the concept in the book initially is broken into, uh, there's two ways mentioned in the book. It's either four accounts or five accounts. I teach it as a five account system, but you can have more accounts. Uh, you can set up an account. I mean, Mobile Beat is a good example. We'll go with what I believe the full price of a Mobile Beat pass is three hundred dollars or something yep. like that. Let's go with that. So, in the process of the system, you can set up when you're making these allocations. If it's once a month, if it's twice a month, take that three hundred dollars and divide it. So, if it's twice a month, divide it by twenty-four, and twice a month you're going to put money into that account, and you're going to. At the end of 12 months, have that $300 available for you to use to buy your pass. I mean, think about it. If you started it now, you know that pass is discounted. Well, it'll be discounted next month, but you know it's discounted all the way through the end of the year. Yeah. If you just want to look through the end of the year, take yeah. nine months, once a month, put nine chunks of money in there, you'll have that discounted payment. 150 bucks probably is what it'll be through the end of the year, right? It's what it is almost every year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I and saw grab. something similar to that. And again, not to, to, to dummy down this whole thing, but they, they, someone did a post that if you each day of the year, you put in that many cents for that day of the year. So like January 1st, you put in a penny, January 2nd and all the way through. And when you get to December 31st, you put 365 cents in there, $3 65 cents, right. almost $700 by doing that, you know, each day you put that in. And that's like you said, the 1% can add up on its own. It does. It does. I mean, think about what 1% in your business is. We, we actually push in Profit First Professionals, which is, is an organization I'm certified with, we push people to the 10% mark. The book tells you to go to 5% because that's where, where the most healthy and the most elite are sitting is 5% profit in their business. Right. And that doesn't include what they're paying the owners of the business, but it is, it is 5% of the overall revenue in the company we are able to get people to that 10% mark. That is our end goal usually is to hit 10%. Some only make it to seven and a half. Some will make it higher than that up to 15, even 20% for some businesses really depends on the business, but True. it can be done. 
How does that make somebody who takes your, your course and goes through that and gets to that seven or 10%? Mm-hmm. How, what kind of responses back have you gotten? Cause it's gotta be probably pretty positive. Well, you know, I just started actually pushing this course. So, so I've taken a few DJs through it. We're actually still in the process of getting them to the 5% mark. Uh, some of them actually were a little lopsided as well as they were, they had money over in profit, but not so much what they were paying themselves. So we've started to shift those numbers a little there, but uh, they look at the numbers and first they kind of step back and they, you can see they want to cry a little bit because they go, that's where I want to be. That's but I'm that's- still way over here and, and I don't know how to get there yet. And I go, don't worry, we're going to get there. It's, it's really, it, it's a simple process, but I encourage people not to confuse simple with easy mm-hmm. because they are very two different things. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. I, the book wouldn't exist. I wouldn't be coaching people on this. <laughs> it would, it yeah. would just be worldwide universal. But it is a very simple process once you understand the basics of it. And so that's, that's really what this course is about is we're going to dive past the basics. We're actually going to get people to do what we call an instant assessment on their business. And this allows them to see exactly where they're dispersing this money. And you can do it with just pulling a few numbers from, from your balance sheet right now. If you have uh, QuickBooks online, you can go pull two or three numbers. You will know exactly what your profit is, what you're paying yourself, where your expenses are going these things all shine like a bright beacon and you go, Oh my goodness. That's where all my money's going. I get it now. Mm -hmm. We show you where you should be at that point. And that's when you start to map out the plan. So we talk about your current allocations. We talk about your, your target allocations, where you want to go and how you can get there. That's all part of this workshop. We're also going to go through the proper way of setting up the bank accounts and the order these should be used in because there is a sequencing to it. If you fail on the sequencing, that's where the system will start to fall apart. Expenses is always the last thing that you're putting your money towards. So you wanna pay yourself first, you wanna take your profit first, you wanna make sure your taxes are paid for, so you're taking those out before you ever start paying the bills of your business. That's when you start your come to Jesus moment and you go, I only got $500 in here, but I got $750 in bills this month, what am I gonna do? Yeah. I'll pay those extra 250 bucks or you find a way to cut out the expense. So you don't have to pay that 250. That's where you start to build a more effective and efficient business. Cool. Mm. Very good. Very good. neat stuff. And, I, and again, I, I really, I definitely learned some different things with the, with the book, but I would be very interested because uh, you're going to be speaking at mobile beat. Yes. 10 AM on Thursday which is the and, last day of the show, the 17th. And then you're going uh, to be doing your workshop also at Mobile Beat. That same day after the show concludes, the official show concludes. So Todd Mitchell is going to come out. He's going to talk about all kinds of awesome things as the closing. He goes on at 2. Sorry, he's done at 2. And then at 3 o'clock through 7 o'clock, we have a four-hour. It's, it's kind of a group coaching session combined with a workshop. Not a lot of seminar in it. That's, that's actually why, even though it's a four-hour, what's... Uh, trying to think what the official term is that Ryan's having us use for this, but it, it's a four hour paid segment. However, that first hour is an extra fifth hour. That's my 10 AM slot. That's okay. why I said early on, those people that are registered before the show, they're getting extra paperwork to go through. They're going to have a follow along guide to my presentation at 10 AM. Nice. That way, when we get to three o'clock, I'm not sitting there doing that first hour over where we do basically a five to 10 minute recast of what just happened. You know, this is what I told you in the first hour. Now let's dive into this. Let's really start working on it. Pull out your numbers. Let's get to work. So, That's so, then, what after, I want to do. so then after the workshop on Thursday, they should have kind of a, a blueprint. Is that a good way to describe? Of, it, of it's how a very could... good way to describe it. Yeah. The, the blueprint of where they exist now, they're going to have that snapshot of where they are now, where they're possibly bleeding in certain areas where uh, they, they can improve upon. They'll know exactly where they need to get to. And, when I do a full profit assessment, which is a, a significantly paid uh, process where we dig a little bit deeper, we actually pull deeper numbers from tax returns, uh, prior years history of things. So it's not as, as uh, compact as the instant assessment, but it's, it's a little bit of a deeper dive into it. We're going to go somewhere between those two things and get you on the right path so that you are hitting those target numbers, hopefully within about a year, year and a half. It, nice. it, depending on how close you are to them. If you're really close to it, it might be done in six months. Most people we found is an adjustment over six to 12 months. In some cases, it goes to a year and a half. Very cool. 
And there's actually a bonus even with this. Well, there's a lot of bonuses. The Ginsu knife set? It is. Oh my god. Oh wait. There's, there's more. more. So the 10 a.m. session, everybody at Mobile Beat gets to see. The three to seven session is the premium package that they get to buy into. After that, we're even going to go to dinner. So everybody that's still scratching their head after five hours of me talking about Profit First and getting them into Profit First, any other advanced questions are going to be able to come up over dinner. However long that dinner goes, if we shut down the restaurant, it's Vegas. That could be tomorrow morning. I don't know. I'm there. I'm available for it. It's, it's actually a freebie bonus for everybody that's part of the actual workshop. Because uh, I, I didn't want to necessarily end it at four hours. When I originally conceived this, this was a day and a half to two day workshop. Unfortunately, with the way everybody else's uh, premium content rolled in, I said, I don't want to compete with some of these guys. I yeah. mean, I, I actually am still deciding, am I going to Ron's? Am I going to Mitch? Am I going to Vicky? Those are all on Sunday and Monday. Yeah. I got to figure that out still. I couldn't compete with that. And now we have uh, uh, Mike and Joe are doing theirs, which unfortunately does go on top of mine. So I can't do their PhDJ anymore. Uh, they start at three o'clock as well, but what can you do? Yeah, it's a busy time, busy time. Jason, if uh, people want to find out more information about what you're what you're doing, you got the URL handy? I don't think I, I do. I, I have a fancy URL with a a discount attached to it. So see okay. if we can see that right there. <laughs> Hang on a second. Lovely. I'm gonna I'm Oop, gonna type we'll that in. Slide over a little bit. So it's spencerspencer.com slash DJ news. And for the next 48 hours Right now, the premium content will be available for $275, which is a it's actually 45% off the door rate. So if you walked up day of and said, I want to take part in this, it's $500 at the show. But right now, anybody who's tuned in for the next 48 hours can get it for $275. And I just well, put actually, that... Go ahead. Yeah, I just put that link down in the description below, gang. So when you do a refresh of this video, you'll be able to see that. It's in the description down below. Okay, 48 hours, go. So that's 48 hours. It's on, Hey, look, there it is. So what's going to happen after 48 hours is there will still be a discount attached to that. So if you're watching this video a week from now, if it's February 1st or something a little bit later than that, there's still going to be a discount attached to that. It's a preferred pricing for disc jockey news people only. So if you're watching this, use that link. You're going to get a discount on whatever the current price is. If you're jumping in on the early bird, there's still going to be money knocked off of that. If you're jumping in on the earlier bird, which is only good through the end of this week anyway, you might as well take this $275 special. Uh, if you get in on the regular pricing, it'll still come down off that. Show, day of, no discounts, no promos, no preferred pricing. Nothing comes off day of. Early, you got to shop early and often. That's what they... Absolutely. Well, it, we all know why. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the same reason we tell our clients, book now, not later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of planning uh, we, and we, prep and... we need to prepare for it. There is a packet that goes with this. So I, I need to know, hey, you need this information in front of you. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff, Jason. Good, good stuff. I'm looking forward to it. I've, I've cleared my Thursday so I can come and sit, and I'm there up until about 4 o'clock on Thursday. So unfortunately, I won't be able to take the, the oh. second session. <laughs> But I'll be able to catch the first session. and uh, I might let you sneak in the first hour. <laughs> <laughs> Was your flight at 4 o'clock? Or, or yeah. are you leaving? The, oh, no, well, it's, I think our, our flight's at about 6.30 or so, something like that. So I think okay. we can leave about 4 o'clock and get there in time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, but definitely the 10 a.m. session, everybody that's attending Mobile Beat gets to be a part of that. All you got to do is be in the big room. Yeah. Good stuff. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the links are in the description below. Just hit, click refresh on this video once we're done, and they're right there, spencerspencer.com slash DJ News, and you can find out more. Guys, it's time for us to wrap things up. It's almost uh, quarter two, and and it's for those of you who know how these work, it's time for me to go read books to my children. You're reading Profit First to them tonight, right? <laughs> no, I think it's it, – we forgot – we. We generally generally read Katie in the Big Snow after a snowstorm. We forgot it yesterday. We're getting it tonight. MJ, final thoughts. I think you should read them this book so that when they get older, they they will take care of you. There's there's a there's a lot of information that I have stacked up for them to be studying. Is and and it's kind of cool that some of the older ones are starting to actually get into it a little bit. So it's like yay. Learn actually, and, you know what what's interesting about this, John, and and I've. I've recently added this to the opening of my presentation. So some people that have seen me present this don't know this yet, but 
Profit First is now taught in high schools in Maine. The Scarborough School District picked up Profit First this school year so that they could teach it to all their seniors. Very so cool. it is something that is starting to trickle down. It, it's, it's at Stanford University. It's at Carnegie Mellon. It's at Pepperdine. It's all part of their MBA programs and their entrepreneurial programs. But now it's starting to make its way into the high school programs too. So it's not like this is, is so hard that you can't figure it out. Kids can do this easily, especially in the economics classes. And, and if you've read the book, you know in the back there's a chapter in more advanced stuff. Uh, there is a chapter on doing Profit First with families. And that's actually another book that, that Mike, the author of, of Profit First, he's, he's writing that now as we speak, is one that goes into family matters. I, it doesn't replace Dan Ramsey by any means, but it, uh, it's very similar in, in the concept. So definitely something that if you can teach your children, do it early. Exactly. It's better. Uh, there's so many lessons that we've learned in the last probably 20 years. And I think MJ, Jason, we, we can all say that if we would have known then what we know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I wouldn't have talked. You know, then I'd be hosting this show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, great stuff, guys. Thank you very much. If you are watching and you have any questions, you can put those down in the comments area down below after the video here. And Jason will be popping out, I'm sure, and checking on those uh, throughout the next couple of days. Or, Jason, if they want to ask you a question, where can they go to uh, catch up with you? Where can they go? Uh, Facebook.com. Well, you can find me on Facebook. It's... I think I'm Spencer Jason on Facebook, but also the uh, the Profit First stuff, you can find me at Spencer Speak, S-P-E-A-K, so like speaking. Uh, same on Twitter, Spencer Speak. Um, certainly that link will take you over to the event page, so you'll be able to read all about the enhanced content that you can pick up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's and, and, and I am Disc Jockey News, so you'll see my article coming out hopefully next month if I got it to you in time. Yeah, we, we, did, yeah. we didn't even get into Parkinson's Law. Boy, I had a good example of that just every time that I submit an article to you. Uh, <laughs> hey, I know this was due two days ago, but do I have time to get it to you? Exactly. There's that, there's that, that procrastination. Um, well, yeah, yeah so I, get, guess, uh, I think my email for Disc Jockey News is Jason Spencer at uh, yeah, DiscJockeyNews.com. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. So you guys can reach him in a variety of different ways. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Have yourself a wonderful evening. This is MJ, John with the Distracting News, and Jason Spencer. Thanks for watching. Good night.